it is time for the fourth and final episode of Breaking 90. We've got Josh. We're going to take him on the golf course and see if he can break 90. Yes, definitely. If you're new to the channel and you want to improve your game and check out the rest of the series, subscribe. And if you enjoyed this, hit the like. And don't forget to check out our Break 90 plan. If you are struggling to break 90, it will help you. And it's in the description below. OK, so it's time for Josh's first, sorry, Josh's final tip to break 90. Do a warm up. He's hit some putts. He's in the net now. Let's go on the course. I don't reckon you can break 90 today. I think you right. It's too windy Fast today. Screens. Okay, so we're going to do something we've not done before, and that is commentate over Josh's round today to hopefully provide you guys with some valuable lessons to help you shoot lower scores and highlight some of the mistakes, simple stuff that Josh makes out here on the golf course. Let's see if you can break 90. Now, the first thing is first tee nerves. He's obviously going to be nervous. He's got the camera and the, the rest of the world watching him here. But how can we improve and settle our nerves? Well, one of the most important things you can do is just focus on your pre-shot routine. If you haven't got a routine, make sure you work on one so, you, so it allows you to really focus on what's important and get clear on exactly what you want. So stick to your routine. And if you haven't got one, make sure you practice it. Okay, first hole at the Asprey. It's a great opener, 435 yards, two well-placed bunkers here. Let's see if he can get on the fairway. Let's kick it off and see if Josh can break 90. So Josh was in a very tricky position here for his third shot. And you can see the flag to the right of the tree. He didn't choose to go towards the flag. It was a very wise decision because it was just too dangerous. So what Josh did was actually aim to miss the green to the left. You don't always have to go for the flag. Sometimes it's safer to actually go away from the danger and put yourself in a position where you can get on the green again. So you see here, Josh played a great recovery shot, just landing on the front of the green, rolling up here. Again, very sensible shot, give him a good opportunity here to actually sink the putt. And one thing you're going to notice today is the greens are really fast at the Aspie, the fastest that they've been all year. And Josh here, a little nervy start and just probably rush the putts a little bit. So make sure when you're in this situation, even on your short putts, you give them as much attention as you would a long putt. Okay, so second hole, par five, dog leg left up the hill, and you'll see Josh here working at his technique a little bit, bearing in mind that club face on the way back. He probably gets a little stationary for my liking over the golf ball here, hits it up the left-hand side. Not his best strike, but he's not in any trouble. Okay, so you can see Josh here, a little bit blocked out by the tree. He has to sort of play this chip shot, and he went from a 7-iron actually to a 5-iron. Changed his mind, which, is, which was sensible. A lot of people make the mistake of actually using too much loft in this scenario, and he played this 5-iron punch shot really nice into the fairway, back in play here. Go, 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 go. No, no. No, no. Slow, uphill into the uphill breeze. Uphill into the wind, Tough yeah. Tough putt. Yeah. Oh, wow. Unlucky. Unlucky. Pace. Yeah, well done. Good. Go. Good six. It's a bogey. Just talk to us about how it's been since the last one, since we did putting. Oh, it was really good. Uh, so as soon as we uh, did the putting, I managed to uh, break 90. Good, Go congratulations. Figure. Yeah, so uh, it was that day actually, and then at the weekend. What did you shoot? Uh, 86. 86, okay. So, and then I shot an 88 on the weekend, and then I've got a couple nice. of, uh, yeah, 42 and uh, 44. Good. So yeah, it's just, it's been pretty good. And I forgot how to swing. <laughs> so, but the putting's helped. Um, so yeah, and today's going all right as just, well. Just looking at the stats that you sent us through as well, yeah. nine hole rounds that you played, you know, you had like, I think 16 putts in nine holes. Yeah. That's just a total difference. I know yeah, you had a yeah. bit of a wobble on the first green. Oh there, yeah, but that's, that, yeah okay. that's forgetting but, about now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's just so, shows you how important the putting part Oh yeah, was. yeah. That, that's probably the biggest improvement to my game is the putting. Nice. And the swing change as well, it's massive yeah. difference oh, yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's, right. Go. Right. let's go. Keep going. Okay, third hole is a tricky little par three downhill, only playing about 110 yards, bunker right and bunker left. And Josh on this one strikes it well, pin high, but leaves it in the bunker right. And he's left himself with a tricky downhill bunker shot to a very narrow green. And from this, you'll see actually Josh plays it very much like a chip shot. We haven't done any work on his bunkers. And you can see he puts himself in trouble over the back of the green here. And then he compounds the problem just with a few poor short game shots here. And you can see really from this, Josh is next to the green in one. And you can see how important it is for a short game. He walks off here with a score of seven. So it's vital that you get the short game right if you want to actually break 90. And we cover a lot of this in our break 90 plan, including the bunkers as well. So make sure you check that out in the description. Okay, fourth hole, relatively short par four. 
You can see Josh here misses it right, but he's missed it on the right side here. Loads of room down the right, and that's something to bear in mind. Understand where you can miss the shot. From there, he just hits it over the back, and you can see again another short game shot that lets him down there, and you're going to really see from this round how vital the short game is if you want to actually save the scores. Not a bad put down there, and walks off with a five. Okay, fifth hole, beautiful par three, playing about 135 yards here. Josh hits a, a bit of a power shank, actually. Not sure how he did this one, but he went about 60 yards through the back of the green. Let's see what he does from here. Brilliant shot. Well done, Josh. Sit down now. Hit the hole, hit the hole, hit the hole, hit the hole. Hit the hit the hole. hole. Yes! <laughs> what Saving a three. from par. <laughs> Do you know what? Thank you. How you made three from there. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous, that is. To get off there with a four, you'd have done yeah. great. So to yeah, get off yeah. there with a three. So that's a 63-yard just... pitch he had there, all running away from him as well. Yeah, that's good. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hole six, a drivable par four for the bigger hitters, less than 300 yards, but this is not an easy hole. It can catch a lot of people out. Josh decides to go for the sensible play here with an iron and hit it up the left-hand side and put it in play to leave himself a wedge up to the green definitely a sensible play here and you can see when he gets to the green here this is the most tricky green on the golf course a huge slope and you can see from his first putt here it just carries on and carries on he didn't actually read that putt well and one of the reasons this he didn't really look at the landscape around the, the green a lot of people are looking at the line that they have in front of them if you look around the hole and how the actual green and the fairway is situated, you'll see the slope and that's going to help you identify any more break than you need. Seventh hole is a very simple par three. It looks it anyway, but the green sits on a bit of an angle and also has a big tier in the middle. Josh hits a, a decent shot here front left, but he's left himself quite a lengthy putt that needs to go up the tier with a little bit of left to right as well. Let's see how he deals with this one. So you can see Josh leaves it short and right here, and this just highlights the green reading. You need to make sure that you spend some time practicing your green reading skills, and also don't underestimate the impact the slope has on speed. Hole eight is one of my favorite holes at the Asprey. It looks like a scene from Canada with the trees around there. Quite a tight fairway, but Josh plays this one really well. Hits it over the bunker, leaves himself a nice pitch to the green, and then he chips on and gives himself a chance to make par. Let's see if he can make it. So he just misses out on the par, but makes a five, which is still pretty solid. But this highlights actually the improvement that Josh has made in his game. His long game is really steady. He's giving himself the opportunities, but just not taking the chances and converting on those greens. Now take a look at this one. This was a great shot from Josh up the ninth, second shot on the par five. What a beauty. Josh follows this up with an even better shot here with his approach shot to the ninth. And this just backs up what we said on the previous hole. His long game is so much better now. And you can see he gives himself slightly dodgy work from the cameraman, but he gives himself a birdie chance. Come on, Josh, let's see if you can convert this one. Unlucky, but a great par to close out the front nine from Josh. All right, Josh, so nine holes in. What's your thoughts? Uh, it's a hard course. It's, yeah. uh, there's a lot of wind I'm not used to playing in. Uh, the greens are very, very fast compared to what I'm used to playing on as well. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's just getting used to the pace of the greens. I think, I think if you look at what Josh has done on this nine holes, I think he's been very good. He's had a, a good element of control. You know, you've just put in some situations, some greens where it's just very different to him and understanding how to do that at this stage is going to be tricky. And it just takes time to do that. But I think, you know, you've done really well with some of the shots that you've hit. Yeah. Some amazing short game shots, mm. to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Some amazing second puts as well on some of the greens. So the way you just played that last hole was pretty good. I'll do you. Fine. No, the, wind, the wind stays like this, so I'm not hitting this. I'll no. go over. If I get back to my ball, it's going to pick up again, isn't it? <laughs> if you have a remote control, it's the... <laughs> turn the fans off, Piers. <laughs> that's nice. See, it's stalling. I think that's a good club, though. Yeah, lovely shot. Yeah, it's a really good shot, that is. Thanks. And it just shows you that you sometimes, it, the one thing that I was hoping that Josh was going to do then was with all that deliberation, that he actually went, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. Because once you have that deliberation, it's easy to sort of be second guessing it when you're hitting the shot. Once you've made your mind up, just do it, 
and deal with the consequence. Yeah, best thing about that, Josh, as well. I'll give you a fist bump anyway. Yeah, yeah, nice best one. thing about that is that <laughs> a few weeks ago, with his open club face, <laughs> that would have been coming back over his head. <laughs> We'd have been running down, <laughs> trying to catch it. Great strong flight now. That's the work that he's done on the backswing. Yeah. Another birdie opportunity for Josh here. Downhill, a little bit off the right. And you can see him taking his time on this, making sure he's looking for the read. And this is really important to make sure that you're focused on the speed. Have those practice swings, thinking about the pace that you want to hit it. If we can get it close on that first one, remember, it's going to make things a lot easier. Let's see how he does on this birdie opportunity. A little firm, but a tricky putt. Again, the greens are so fast here at the Asprey at the moment. But as you can see, Josh holds out really well on this one and walks off with another great par. Okay, so Josh is still in with a chance of breaking 90. Not the start that he'd hoped for, but one thing that would say to you guys is that just stay positive. Stay hopeful that you can achieve it because it's so easy to get down and let your attitude sort of go negative here. So just believe that you can do it and it's amazing what you can actually salvage out of a round. Okay, tricky pitch here from Josh, just missing the green left. This is a great opportunity to talk about what Josh was thinking on this. He told us that he was focusing on not thinning the golf ball. And we always talk about focus on what you want rather than what you don't want. And you can see how that negative thought impacted him on this one. Twelfth hole here, Josh has a mid-iron, green slopes from left to right here, great par three, let's see how he does on this one. Okay, let's talk about this chip shot. Josh here has a 60 degree, he's got loads of green to work with, the ball is lying nicely. You can see the ball pops up and just stays short here. When you've got plenty of green to work with here, make sure you select your lower lofted club get the ball on the ground, rolling towards the hole. Josh made the mistake of using that loft there, and it certainly cost him a shot. Par five, 13, great hole here, dog leg left round the corner. Josh doesn't get his uh, a good shot away here. It's a bit of a sky with his three wood, short and in the rough. But this is a mistake that a lot of people would make now. They're in the rough, they've got miles to go. They grab the three wood out and end up hitting a poor shot. But Josh, what he does here, which was great, he works out what he'd like left in on his third shot and chooses an iron to put himself back in play. And his course management really paid off here, getting on the green in three shots and giving himself a chance of a birdie still. Very unlucky not to make his par, but you can see how the putting certainly is letting him down and racking up that score for him today. Back where it all began for Josh, where he had his lesson on the 14th here. One of my favourite holes on the golf course and one of the hardest out there. He doesn't quite get off to the best tee shot, hits it out to the right, he's blocked off. But it's a great example of just focusing what you have in front of you and not letting a bad shot really get good. to you. He plays a nice shot over the trees to leave shot. himself a pretty Beautiful. straightforward chip onto the green. And he chips it on, plays a good shot giving himself a chance of a par. He played this hole really well, considering he was out of position off the tee. Fifteenth hole, short par four, well bunkered up the left. They've got some water up there. Josh doesn't hit his best tee shot, but he's in a safe place here, short of the bunkers. Then he plays a nice recovery shot just to the right of the flag here, leaving himself a chip onto the green. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Good line! <laughs> wow. Pushed it. Fuck's sake. Lucky. Beautiful views here on the 16th at the Asprey. Slight dog leg left round the corner, par four. And safe to say, this wasn't Josh's best hole. He starts poorly, hits a bit of a fat shot off the tee, and then really loses maybe a little bit of focus on this. And it's just so important, even towards the end of the round, to stay focused and to stay focused on what you have in front of you. And it's clear to see Josh isn't going to be breaking 90 today, but this is still really important. Even though he's not going to be breaking 90, there's still going to be a couple of holes left. And if you are in this situation, Stay focused on what you 
can do. You can always pull something from a good round, so don't give up until that final putt has gone into the hole. 17th hole works its way back towards the beautiful Asprey Hall. Great par five that slopes from left to right on the fairway, and you can see the strategically placed tree. If you're a little bit of a fader or a slicer, this tree is in play, and it was in play for Josh. He hits it straight into the trunk. It rebounds to the right in the rough but he gets it back in play. He uses an iron instead of trying to hit a hero shot with a three wood, puts it back in play to give himself a good chance of getting on the green. He doesn't quite make the green, but he leaves himself a chip and then gives himself a good opportunity to actually make a par. The finishing hole at the Asprey is iconic. It's a signature hole, par three, downhill, over water. It can be intimidating. You get a good look at the Asprey hole from here. But Josh does a great job here. He hits a great iron shot, a little bit past the flag, and leaves himself a chip onto the green. But what we see is that Josh's short game and putting oh, let him no. down again here bad. on this final right. hole. But it's no surprise, the Asprey are renowned for really fast and slopey greens, and these are the fastest that they've been all year. If you ever do play the Asprey, your putting will be tested. Oh, again. And as you can see, this sums up Josh's game today of why he didn't break 90. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Well done, Josh. Good well stuff. done, guys. Good well stuff. Really, really, really good. Yeah, it was Great good stuff. fun. So that is the really. end of Breaking 90. Look, unbelievable work from Josh. Made some fantastic improvements in his golf swing. And he didn't quite do it, but lots to take from and learn. And putting definitely will be one of the things oh, yeah. that we can improve on some short games. Hope you enjoyed that as well. Yeah, don't forget to hit the like and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out Break 90. Link is in the description. You can break 90 just like Josh did. Not today, but the last before. time you played. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. soon.